today I'm going to set the airspace in the primary to secondary airspace. And I've clamped, um, clamped my angle, holding the upper tube uh, to the side of the clamps. And um, I have my mirror sill in place, screwed in. I have the uncoated uh, primary setting in there. And I have my tube clamped on here at the right distance, 5.3 inches from the end. And I have a, not my secondary, but a piece of block of wood, the same thickness as the secondary. So I want to measure the uh, primary secondary airspace. And since my mirror is uncoated, I'm not likely to scratch it. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't do this if your primary is coated. So I'm going to measure this. Set it on the primary and then measure to the secondary plug. And that's an inch too long. My radius is a little bit longer than the F12 um, should be. So um, Mine should be 72.96 and an inch longer. So I'm going to move this down, make a mark and move it down, and then it'll be in the right position for the, for the airspace. I could also adjust the airspace by moving the tube up and down because that changes the airspace. But I want to set it as close to nominal as I can for now. And the next thing I did is add the side braces. This is an inch and a quarter aluminum, um, 3 sixteenths inch thick, uh, 33 and a quarter inches long, and they're uh, screwed and threaded into the, the angle piece here. Um, and then down here it's uh, threaded into the, the internal brace, wood, wood brace behind here. We'll eventually put in threaded insert. See the uh, how the tube is going to sit on there. Okay, uh, you can see I've attached my secondary holder. Uh, I used three number three uh, brass screws and equidistant around. And um, if you look on my CAD drawing, you see that the the front edge of the tube will obstruct incoming light. So uh, to avoid that, I I ground away a 25 degree angle um, on the front edge of the, this tube. Did it on my t table saw with a sanding disc and I um, need to clean that up and um, blacken it and then I'll put a, also put a, a baffle on here uh, later. Next I want to mount my secondary mirror and because I don't have them coated yet, I'm t temporarily going to use this uh, octagonal mirror because um, I've got it on hand and it's aluminized. Um, now if you remember, I drilled and tapped a hole right next to the top edge of the tube. And I'm going to, that's for a threaded rod that's going to go here and that's going to be the mechanism that tilts the um, the lens group. So um, I have to be sure that uh, I have enough clearance for the for this rod, and I'm uh, I'm going to use uh, since it's temporary. I'm going to use th three pieces of this 3M uh, 110 uh, foam tape. That's actually pretty strong. You can even mount your secondary on there, and it'd be just as well. Although usually I use uh, silicone glue with a spacer. So I'm going to put this uh, secondary mirror on here and peel this tape covers off. And remember that the um, the low edge will, will be towards the the front of the tube. I'm going to put this mirror in here. 
and center it up on the as best I can here. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, but should be somewhat centered. Alright, the next step is to put in the lens cell that I had made previously. And notice I have a stainless steel piece of shim stock um, taped on this taped on with 3M double-sided tape. And on opposite of that I have a, a little brass screw. Um, which I'll wrap a spring around to pull it back this way and then the threaded rod will push against the the um, stainless steel kind of like this there's a this will be on the, on the bottom of the tube and this, the, the rod will push that against the plate and rotate their lenses and we'll be able to do that at the eyepiece Okay, now for the fun part. I want to put the uh, lens cell in, in the right orientation, uh, and note that I've got a piece of wood. I have the opening laying on a piece of wood so that it's uh, laying flat. And uh, I, I put a mark on my tube where I want my seam to go so that when I get, get this in there, the rotation axis is going to be uh, parallel with uh, the opening of the tube. So uh, don't forget that the convex lens is on the will be on the the last lens. The the face the concave lens will be facing as well as the um, it'll be facing the the secondary mirror. So I'm going to start this in. Um, with the seam on my mark. Let me get this started here. Because once once I get it inside the tube, I won't be able to rotate it, so you need to push it in straight to, to begin with. Yeah, get this going there. Here we go. And this is a push fit. I'm sure it's going to stay once I get it pushed in. And so, see my seam and my mark are good, so I'm going to push this in and uh, note from my CAD drawing that the the lens needs to be only two inches from the back end so I have a uh, dowel rod with a two inch mark on it and when I touch off the, the center of the, the lens should be two inches so I'm still outside so I'm going to push it in just a little at a time to measure it and so on until I get to two inches. But that's the idea. All right, after I have the lenses in the right distance back, two inches back, um, I put the um, Delrin holder you can see there. With it has a clearance hole for the threaded rod, and it's uh, it's uh, stuck in place with 3M super bond uh, super bond strength tape, double sided, and that'll push up against the threaded rod. The threaded rod will push up against this uh, stainless steel uh, to rotate the the lens group. Now the next thing I need to do is put a spring to to pull it back and always keep it in contact with the threaded rod. Now looking down the, the reflection of the secondary down the tube you can see the uh, threaded rod in my little uh, Delrin holder there. Now the next thing I need is to, to attach the spring this is the spring I'm, I made. It's an 18 thousandths thick wire. Um, I had it laying around home. Um, 
got put a hook on one end to go around the brass screw on the bottom and the back end I put a little uh, uh, bend in it so that it, it's held, it'll be held in place with this ring. Remember I saved the, the cutoff pieces from the tool, shortened it so it presses in and then I'm going to attach the other end of the spring to the uh, actually original mounting hole in this tube. So let me do that. So here I have my uh, spring installed and you can see that it's pulling it back against the threaded rod. This ring has to be pushed in far enough so that my focuser flange goes in there so that'll that'll give clearance for my focuser like so and I'll put my focuser on and we'll, we're done with this part all right so I have my focuser mounted on one thing left to do on my threaded rod up here I need to put a knurled nut and then with thread lock on it so that I can use that to rotate my uh, uh, lens cell in there and then I need to put on a little piece of uh, uh, plastic here for a baffle and then it's uh, ready to, to go on to the, uh, the rest of the scope. Well you got mail on your server and you got mail that's classified even some that are top secret so everybody knows you lie but I run around Benghazi to the law that you comply so never say